Okay, we'll call the Zoning Board of Adjustment meeting of October 23rd to order. Uh, the Zoning Board of Adjustment is a quasi-judicial board created by the City of Ames. The board's purpose is to decide on applications for home occupation permits, special use permits, exceptions and variances to the zoning ordinance, applications for conditional use permits in the floodplain, requests for reasonable accommodation because of a handicap, and appeals of de decisions of the zoning enforcement officer. As a board of the city, we welcome all testimony. We make our decisions based on the facts and evidence as allowed under city code and present it in open meeting. Testimony before the board must be given under oath or affirmation. If the proceedings become lengthy, we may ask that testimony be focused on new facts or evidence not already presented. We ask that you come to the microphone if you wish to speak at the podium <coughs> um, so that your testimony will be audible and may be recorded before speaking. Please complete an orange information card. They're on the table <coughs> right here. Um, you can fill one out and bring it up with you um, and hand it to our recording secretary. Do you want to wave? Please. <laughs> Thank you. Um, when you are testifying, please address your remarks to the board. We ask that the proceedings be orderly. The Zoning Board of Adjustment is an independent volunteer board of citizens. We are not part of the city administration. We are served in our efforts by um, Vicki Fielmeyer, city attorney. Um, and tonight we have Benjamin Campbell and Ray Anderson Planners and Jackie Higgins, recording secretary. The order of proceedings for each application will be as follows. First, an oral statement summarizing the issues and procedural steps will be presented by the staff. Second, testimony and evidence will be presented by the applicant. Third, testimony may be heard from any members of the audience who wish to speak in support of or in opposition to the appeal. Next, the board will give the applicant and city staff an opportunity to present concluding summaries and arguments. And finally, the board will discuss the issues and evidence and come to a decision. Okay, first item on the agenda is approval of minutes of the meeting of October 9th, 2019. I do have a question. Um, I wasn't here. May I still vote to pass them? Great, thank you. Um, so are there any corrections to the minutes? Um, hearing none. I move to approve the October 9th meeting. I'll check on it. Great. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Okay. And so the minutes are approved. Um, the next item is the request continued from September 11th, 2019 and October 9th, 2019 meetings to allow carpet cleaning, water damage mitigation, and odor removal as a special home occupation at 4004 Arkansas Drive. Staff? Yes. Um, you had asked uh, staff to look into a few of um, the, uh, look into a few questions that you'd had clarifications on the uh, zoning ordinance. Um, and one of those was on the um, provision for special home occupation employment and what specifically, how specifically how staff interpreted that. And so I had a, did some research and had a number of conversations um, and uh, the text of the zoning ordinance does state that home occupation shall employ only members of the household residing in the dwelling unless approval for the employment of up to two non-family members is granted by the Board of Adjustment. The ordinance does not differentiate between on-site or off-site and does not make a distinction between part-time or full-time employees. Um, and, you know, Staff determined that the code permits a maximum of two non-household employees, regardless of the number of hours they work or whether they visit the site or whether they don't. Um, you know, whether or not that should or shouldn't be the case is, you know, the code just doesn't give us that clarity. We didn't feel, uh, and there was a, a previous special home occupation in 2013 where also a cleaning company where the board did require the applicant to reduce the number of non-household employees to two as a total. Mm -hmm. uh, there was also um, a question or some confusion about parking and what we did or didn't allow on the street. Uh, code does say, city code in chapter 18, 
that it is unlawful for any person to park any vehicle and to permit the same to remain standing continuously and in one place for a period of no more than 48 hours upon a city street. So 48 hours is the max that a vehicle can be parked in one spot. Um, so that does include trailers when they are hitched to vehicles. A trailer, an unhitched trailer, cannot be parked on a street. Uh, and I did talk to the police department as well about parking issues on this street and uh, over the past year and the police department told me that their parking complaints, uh, none of the parking complaints that they re uh, re received resulted in any tickets because they, they were addressed, the vehicle was moved, and that uh, department records indicate that Arkansas Drive does not have more parking issues than any other city street. Um, and one other thing, you um, uh, just as a point of clarification about um, signage on vehicles, um, we the the sign ordinance specifically exempts signage on vehicles um, you know, that are operable, that are moving. Um, you know, if a vehicle had been you know put up on blocks or something in a front yard, that would be different. But uh, an operable vehicle, we don't permit, uh, or we don't require a permit for um, signage on that vehicle. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Could you clarify again what a delivery vehicle is? Um, we don't have a definition of a commercial vehicle. Okay. Um, and I, I don't know that I specifically looked up delivery, but I, I don't think that's in there either um, that we address. Okay. Is this in the... On the parking criteria, one delivery vehicle associated with the activity may be parked on the street near the premises for not more than four consecutive hours. Uh, I just wondered what the delivery vehicle was and how it was different from the, the I mean, work I, vehicle. I think of that as, you know, a, a truck that is, um, you know, bringing goods or something that is used for the business. That would be my interpretation. That could be a, a van or a truck of some sort. So it, would it apply then to the, the clean indeed truck and van? Correct. I wouldn't think that that's specifically okay. for that. That's just for something that's being delivered to the home occupation. Okay. Great. Thank you. Are there any other questions for staff? No. No. Okay. Um, now it's time for the applicant to speak to their request. Um, I'll swear you in. Do you swear to tell the truth? Yes, I do. And please state your name and address. Yasser Obeid, 4004 Arkansas Drive, Ames, Iowa, 50014. Okay. All right. Um, just three pieces of information that I might have, um, I may have failed to um, include in the last meeting two months ago. Um, I do work part-time at BioLife Plasma Services as a man member of management, um, and all of my shifts, all three of them, sometimes four, but typically three a week, they start around 5 a.m., and it goes until 9 a.m. or whatnot. And so typically I would leave my house around 4.45, 4.50, or sometimes 6.30 on the weekends to report to work, um, aside from my self-employment. Um, I don't think that I mentioned that before. Um, as far as employee hours, um, I know we got some clarification from Ben, um, but the total of number of hours that are worked by um, non-household members typically range between 10 and 20, 25 hours a week combined for all the employees that I have. Um, and then the parking on the street, I was going to talk about it, but apparently Ben summarized it all. So, mm -hmm. um, And about the number of employees, you are limited to two maximum if the board approves a second employee. So you would need to reduce down to that number. Is that? If that's what we have to do, then yes. Okay, great. Um, any other questions for the applicant? No. Okay. Um, at the last hearing on no, September 11th, we did close the public hearing. Um, I would entertain a motion to reopen the public hearing if only new facts or evidence are discussed. Um, do you have a motion? I'll move to reopen the public hearing. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Okay, so now it's time for the public hearing. Um, anyone wishing to speak, please bring your orange information card up to the front. Um, thank you. <laughs> this light really bothers me. <laughs> oh. 
I, um, do you swear to tell the truth? I do. Okay, and your name and address? My name is Ann Packard. I live at 3908 Arkansas Drive. Okay. Thank you. So I have some images. I don't know if there's a way to show. I can take them okay. put them up on the end. So that's that's the one. first one. Or if you give them, give them all to me, then I can flip through them. Well, I don't know that all of it's new information. Okay. It's I haven't been here before, so it's new to me, but. <coughs> So this is the parking situation in our cul-de-sac. The yellow highlighted driveways are single car width. Um, we have, I think it says 13 single car width driveways. Eight of those are at the duplexes. So typically there's at least two residents with vehicles. And anytime you have a single with driveway you have to do shuffling or somebody ends up parking on the street so rough calculation going through marking the no parking areas there's roughly 23 on street parking spaces so i would contend that parking is an issue on our street and yasser has three vehicles with signage and a personal vehicle and um you know, if there's one or two employees, that's additional vehicles. And the ideal would be that all those vehicles would be in that driveway, but logistically that's not physically possible all the time. So I've got a lot of photographs showing his vehicles parked in various areas. Um, there's typically at least one of his vehicles located on the street at any given time. And at the intersection of Arkansas Avenue and Arkansas Drive, um, he's also parked his commercial truck down by that intersection, which is almost at the opposite end from his residence. And um, that doesn't seem fitting or an appropriate parking place for his business. If you can show the next one. This one, I apologize, is dark. It was taken in the evening. But this is his commercial van in the driveway with the doors wide open. So uh, no one was around at the time. Um, I walked up and down the block um, taking some other pictures. This was upon my return. So I think it was left open unattended for a decent amount of time, at least 15 minutes, maybe 30 um, with no one in attendance and with the chemicals that he's using, I, we've got a lot of kids in the neighborhood, so that doesn't seem particularly safe. <clears throat> so I've got two pictures. This is one. There's been a structure added near the door to the house. It seemed, or the residence, it seems to be housing equipment. So it's a little house on stilts with something inside. You can show the next one. This is taken roughly from my driveway, uh, looking over that. There's one house in between our house and his. And it's unclear what's in there, but that's been added since the original 9-11 meeting date. And the last one, I know you talked about exempting signs on vehicles, but there are currently three commercial vehicles, all with large amounts of signage. Anybody who's running a business who puts commercial, commercial signage on their vehicle is doing that for advertising to capture the attention of people. And 
The first photo of the blue car was taken on 9-11. The second photo, my original one was 10-7. It wasn't very clear. This was a little more recent. But you can clearly see how much additional signage has been put on the blue car since the original hearing date of 9-11. Um, seems like I had something else, but I can't think of it now. So do you have any questions for me? Board? No. 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 Thank okay. you. Anyone else wishing to speak? I'll do your name and address and then it's where you went. All right. My name is Justin Shares and I live at 4018 Arkansas Drive. Okay. Do you swear to tell the truth? I do. Great. All right. So again, I would also echo much of what Ms. Packard had just previously said. I have a family in the neighborhood. I have two young children. We moved there. My wife had actually testified at this thing at the, the St. Pepper with me, but we moved there because it's a very quiet neighborhood. It's a very safe neighborhood. And I think like more of my concern is more from the chemical standpoint. I've worked in molecular biology labs for years. We take chemical safety, chemical hygiene very seriously. And just the fact that, an example showing Ms. Packard's photo before of having the van unsecured and open. I think some photos that have been shown by Ms. Whipple at the previous meeting showing chemicals just kind of lined up outside the space and not necessarily knowing what the hazards are. I think that I read previously in the September 11th meeting that the fire marshal had signed off on the safety data sheets for these chemicals. My concern is, were they signed off purely from a fire-based standpoint, or did they also include the health or reactivity hazards? Because typically when you're dealing with chemicals designed to be antimicrobial, you're dealing with more of a health hazard, more of an exposure hazard there than necessarily a fire one. In fact, I can even show some documents here as well, too. This is a material safety data sheet for a chemical called Microban X590. If you go to the Clean Indeed website under the section What We Use, there is a picture of a bottle of this chemical that was on the site. And you can see that under the Global Hazard Certification and Classification of Hazards, the primary hazard from this would be potentially eye damage or irritation. It's considered a Category 2 substance. The GHS scale, typically one is your highest level hazard, descending to four to low level hazard. And if these chemicals are potentially airborne or released in the neighborhood, like if my kid's playing in the neighborhood and slips and falls into a puddle or something, I mean, and especially if I don't even know what that chemical is, I don't know how to treat it or what to tell the doctor of how to treat it. These sheets are very important for being able to determine how a doctor should handle circumstances if someone is exposed to chemicals. I'm not sure what chemicals are on the site. I'm not sure what the response category is. I'm actually even curious if the safety sheets are posted for the storage location as well. Any questions? Nope. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? And you already turned in your orange card, right? Excuse me? Did you turn in your orange card already? Yes. Okay, great. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Name and my, address? My name is Catherine Dingus, and I live at 3914 Arkansas Drive. Okay. And do you swear to tell the truth? Yes, I do. Thanks. Um, I'm sorry I missed the first hearing, and so this uh, topic may have been addressed at, at a previous time, but uh, it's important to me because um, I, I own the house next door and have invested um, a considerable amount of money in that property in order to enhance its value and considering then resale for that. My concern is that this, uh, the business in town would, or in our community, would have a negative impact on our property values. And uh, that would be my, my biggest concern. Um, I do have to qualify, though, that uh, Yasser and his wife have been um, really, really good neighbors to me. So I'll give them that. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Questions? Nope. Okay. Um, anyone else wishing to speak on this before we? Okay, seeing no one moving to the microphone, we'll close the public hearing. 
Um, now it's time for <coughs> the board to ask any other questions of staff or the applicant. So we'll start with staff. Any further questions for staff? I have a question. Okay. Is any signage required for chemicals to apply for a home occupation permit? That is not something that is called out in the in the ordinance. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know we have another carpet cleaning home business that came before this board in 2013, 2014? Yeah, there was one in 2013, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, were there any conditions on that one? Did you look at that permit? I did, yes. Okay. I'm trying to remember. I'm just wondering the um, chemicals. I've got it on here. Um, yeah, it was in 2013, um, and it looks like my whether or not conditions were attached got cut off on this. What I printed out. Um, yeah, there there have been a number of, of special home occupations that did pertain to cleaning over the years. Okay. Um, conditions were applied to some uh, have been applied in the past. And any uh, conditions re I, regarding chemicals? None of them, I'm confident that none of them regarded chemicals. Okay. There right. were conditions applied to um, to some of the cleaning. We had carpet cleaning and uh, carpet and upholstery cleaning, and just general cleaning businesses that were home occupations, but um, nothing that pertained to chemicals. <coughs> the concerns were more... Um, More for parking and for um, the number of employees. Um, okay. We did require, nope, I'm going to take that back. Uh, in 2000, uh, a carpet cleaning, we did. Um, the hazardous cleaning products were an issue there and I don't know specifically you know the chemicals might have been different they may mm -hmm. you know I <coughs> I don't know I yeah. um, I don't know that we would even have that if I looked back um, but um, we did talk about conditioning requires all equipment to be stored in the business van or the garage or the home okay. um, and the applicant has um, indicated that all of his uh, chemicals will be stored in the garage okay Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions for staff? No, not this time. Okay, and now it's time for the questions for the applicant again, or any other statements from the applicant? Yes. Um. Go ahead. Hi. Hi, I have a few questions. Yes. Um, so the structure that's been added. Oh, the structure. Is that just? The structure is amazing. <laughs> It's my uh, work of art. So I uh, own an electric cart, um, and the electric cart obviously needs um, a charging station. Mm -hmm. So I built from scratch something I'm very proud of, and thank you for displaying it. Um, so pretty much it's just homemade little big birdhouse that I tried to buy from Menards, but they didn't have it because they don't make them that big. So just to shelter my, um, um, my charging station for my uh, new Mercedes, the blue one, mm -hmm. to charge on my uh, driveway. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yep. Um, okay. Is the Mercedes, the blue one, does that go to the job sites? I forget. We asked that last time, so I apologize. That car has no purpose or specific purpose except for me driving it. Just advertising. Advertise, drive. commute, cheap. Um, I don't have to put gas in it. Um, I love it. So, Okay. Yeah. 
it's my main personal vehicle. If I'm not driving with the family, then we drive a Honda Odyssey. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yep. Are there any other questions for the applicant? No, the, the structure was my only one, so. Okay. Yeah. Is there mm -hmm. anything else you'd like to add? Um, so chemicals, like um, Ben said, they're stored either in um, the garage or a small amount is carried in the van for job sites, and that's about it. And so nothing, like I said before, so it's not new evidence uh, or information. And nothing is dumped on site. Nothing is um, disposed of on the drive or anything like that. So unless someone is climbing into the van um, and trying to get into something, mm -hmm. um, their kids would not be able to get a hold of anything. No different than household bleach or household goo gone or anything else that could be um, a hazard. <coughs> okay. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Um, if there are no more questions. I think it's time for a motion. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion that I'm hoping addresses the issues we've heard. Um, I move that the Zoning Board of Adjustment approve the request to allow carpet cleaning, water damage mitigation, and odor removal as a special home occupation at 4004 Arkansas Drive um, with the addition of allowing um, two non-family members and the following conditions. There shall be no on-site operation of cleaning equipment um, for customers. The truck and van used, uh, the service truck and van, shall not be parked on the street for more than four consecutive hours at a time and no more than one at a time. The number of employees must be reduced to two. Loading and unloading of cleaning supplies from vehicles shall occur only when vehicles are parked in driveway. Chemicals shall be securely stored in garage and or vehicles. The review of, a review of the permit shall occur in one year. Second. Is there any discussion? Uh, I think this addresses the primary complaints while still allowing to operate the business. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what the home occupation is all about. Mm -hmm. So, um, my only other comment is for the neighbors that while the uh, motion includes a one year um, review of the permit, I believe last time we did establish that any complaints received. Um, also would call the permit back to our board for review of if the standards and conditions are being met. So please <laughs> reach out. Um, okay, so there's a motion by Shoneman and a second by Perkins. Um, roll call vote. Aye. Aye. No. Okay. Um, the motion is declared approved. Any person desiring to appeal this decision? Actually, no. Oh, no. We have to have three. We have to have three. Have three. three votes. Yeah, and he said no. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the motion is tabled to the next <laughs> meeting, right? Well, <laughs> do we have to make that motion? To table it? Specifically? Or is it automatic? I think it's automatic. Okay. Okay. Yep. So the next meeting is... <laughs> October. Well, not October. November. Are we on the monthly schedule now? Yep. Be the first November. November something. Calendar first meeting in November. Whenever <laughs> that yeah, is. November. <laughs> okay. Yes. Motion to table to the first meeting in November. Okay. Second. Um, uh, so that would be November 13th. Would yeah. November 13th. I, I believe. Okay. We're, we're, we're second and fourth Wednesdays of the month. That's not okay. Jackie, isn't it? Yeah, um, so that's a motion by, do we have to do a motion or is it automatic? 
You don't have to, but let's just do it. Okay. <laughs> right. We've got a motion in the second. <laughs> motion by Shaba, second by Perkins. Um, roll call vote. Aye. 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 Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is a request for an exception to parking area dimensions for the parking lot located at 2110 Lincoln Way and 117 Beach Avenue. Staff? Anderson, planner of the office. Um, good evening. Um, this is an exception uh, from the uh, uh, parking regulations uh, in the code having to do with uh, the length of some parking spaces and the width of the drive aisle. And it's for the property located at 2110 Lincoln Way and also 117 Beach. Avenue and by the way uh, these two parcels are <coughs> being combined into one and the address will be just 2110 Lincoln Way but presently it's got the two addresses um, and the parking lot is in this location this is Lincoln Way and this is Beach Avenue uh, the Iowa State Center is across the street over here um, and what they would like to do is remove the current parking lot and replace it with new paving uh, there's a lot of things about the current parking lot that don't meet the code that are we would call them non-conforming um, but I'll go through some of those um, and th the key thing is not to make the non-conformities worse not to make them more non-conforming um, and they're not doing that uh, in fact uh, a number of things they're addressing that are non-conforming now that will be conforming with the new parking lot. And the, the two parking lots are in this, this exact same location. Uh, they are, i to adjust this a little bit. Um, Presently, uh, there's there's two accesses on the beach. This is Beach Avenue at the bottom down here, and there's there's an access here, and there's an access here, and um, uh, this is actually a, a, a two-way access. This is just exit only, um, and they do have front yard parking now, which uh, is not allowed by the code. But um, what they're doing to uh, improve upon that is um, presently it, it goes all the way to the property line and they're setting that back another 10 feet and then um, they are uh, going out here 10 feet which is roughly the, the same amount of paving that was here so it's approximately the same amount of paving with the new as it is with the old. But the, the plus with that is that then they can have a drive aisle that's 24 feet wide, which meets the code, and parking spaces over here that are 19 feet um, deep, and over here 17 and a half with a one and a half foot overhang. Uh, so that meets the code. Um, so that's, that's one improvement that's being made. Uh, the exceptions that they're asking for ha has to do with uh, the width of the drive aisle in this location. It's 16.1 feet, typically it would be 24 feet. And then here, 21.6 feet, and typically it would be 24 feet. Um, the 16.1 feet, it really only affects the one parking space. And, and there is another 15 feet here where they can back out into. So, so uh, 
it doesn't impact it as much as you might think because there is more space here for backing and then as you go between the two buildings here this is the fraternity and this is the six unit apartment building uh it's, it goes down to 21.6 feet there's a garbage dumpster and enclosure here but but there's all this space here and so it, it's kind of at a transition from this parking area to this parking area and so uh, there's more room than you might first uh, uh, see there for the maneuvering so uh, and that's a that's a key element of granting the exception is that there needs to be room to maneuver with the dimensions that they're proposing um, they're proposing 45 degree angle parking here and 90 degree parking here uh, the 90 degree parking requires a drive out width of 24 feet uh, the uh, uh, angled parking is only about 13 feet so uh, they do meet the drive out width for those parking spaces and these are the parking spaces that are one foot short of the requirement they're 18 feet deep and the code requires they be 19 so that's that's the other part of the exception in addition to these two dimensions for the drive aisle these parking spaces are one foot short um, uh, but it but it's helpful that uh, it does have a full width of drive aisle behind it for maneuvering um, the new uh, landscape regulations that were adopted uh, in the last couple of years uh, would require uh, landscaping at least seven feet wide along the west edge of those and then along the south boundary of this parking they they don't have those kind of dimensions with with what they have to work with it's about two and a half feet wide along the south and one to two feet wide along the west uh, so those are non-conforming aspects and again they're not making them worse uh, you know that that's something they can't resolve but but it's it's no worse than it is with the current parking lot um, they are adding two handicapped accessible spaces which would meet the code there's no handicapped access accessible spaces currently um, there's one in this location that's van accessible which means the space is eight feet wide and the access aisle is eight feet wide and then there's another one up here that's the standard uh, handicapped accessible space where the access aisle is five feet wide and that space is eight feet wide um, so there are there are a number of things that they're uh, doing uh, given the space they have to work with that actually improves the situ situation over what they have presently um, another thing I might mention is uh, there's they have a a trash dumpster here with a trash enclosure um, the way the parking lot is now the the dumpster is over here kind of in in the way almost of uh, vehicles that are maneuvering and this will uh, put it in a designated location and also screen it which is required by the code so that's that's another improvement they're making and also uh, along this exit aisle there's cars parked here now and those will no longer be allowed to park there so that's that's another improvement uh, they are adding uh, four trees uh, in the on the perimeter of the parking lot that uh, with our landscape regulations for parking lots uh, they would be required to have seven trees they have actually four now they're adding four more so they have one more than required um, and that's that's another good improvement over what they have so um, so there's a number of improvements they're making there's some things that you know the space just doesn't allow them to to uh, meet the code um, and, and that's why they're asking for these exceptions and uh, in the code it says that uh, if uh, the exceptions uh, meet the criteria for approval um, which includes um, space for maneuvering trucks vans and full-size uh, passenger vehicles um, that um, that would then allow the board to grant an exception and and we believe that uh, 
they've done all they can to accomplish that and and it, it does meet the criteria and uh, our recommendation is for approval be glad to answer any questions you might have okay board any questions for staff nope nope pretty straightforward <clears throat> okay um, now it is time for the applicant to speak to their request is the applicant here hello name and address please uh, John Washington uh, my home address is 26114 520th Avenue Ames Iowa okay and do you swear to tell the truth I do um, I, I just wanted to point out the 16.1 foot dimension um, it's kind of been a transition area from two-way to one-way um, flow through the parking lot so um, to the west of that location would be two-way and then starting at the dumpster enclosure would be one way kind of going around that way um, there is a little bit of an overlap area there with that one space backs out that Ray mentioned um, so I just wanted to point that out and then the other exception the 18 foot deep spaces along the west property line there um, I, w I would point out that several other the city of Des Moines for example um, their parking space dimension is 18 feet deep as a requirement so um, I just want to throw that out there so you guys are aware of that okay any, any questions? questions no okay thanks so much yep are there any members of the public wishing to speak on this request Hello. Hello. Name and address, please. Jay Hinkhouse, uh, 5876 Aerosmith Trail, Ames, Iowa. Okay. And do you swear to tell the truth? Yes. Thank you. I represent the um, corporation that owns the property next door, 2112 Lincoln Way. And so there, the fence and the trees they talked about are right kind of on our property line. Mm -hmm. um, it's my understanding that the new code says they're supposed to have a seven foot buffer from parking to property line and I don't know right now that it is one and a half to two feet because I didn't measure it we just got the notice recently mm -hmm. um, and so that would be kind of my concern the other concern would be any changes in how uh, runoff uh, from rain um, the rain starts at uh, Gray Street at the top of the hill and runs through all the back lots of all the fraternities and it comes across this lot and then down to beach and that's been something that's been looked at a lot in the past so I don't know if that changes anything and if the landscaping law is that for all properties regardless of what kind of zone the building is Okay, because I know there's... Oh, I'm just shaking my head like I will ask. Okay. I'm not shaking so, my head confirmed. So, <laughs> I know there's a separate zoning law for fraternities and sororities different from high-density housing. Mm. And I assume that this apartment complex becomes fraternity housing since they removed a lot line. Mm. But I don't know if that changes anything with parking or not. So, those are the questions that the people that I have to answer to kind of wanted me to bring up okay um, the number of parking spaces for the apartment building um, are based upon an apartment building not a fraternity so okay. um, there's 15 required for the apartment building and there's 11 required for the fraternity um, apartment building it's based on the number of bedrooms and the fraternity is based on the number of beds and so um, the total of the two is 26 so they're they're meeting the minimum requirement so they're going to have a separate 
the fraternity house is going to be fraternity housing and the it, apartment, even though it's on the same lot now, yeah. will be designated an apartment it, it's building. It's still an apartment building, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and Ray, did this project trigger the city's stormwater requirements? N no, it did not. Okay. Um, so there will be no treatment on site or anything well it, um, it it uh, it doesn't trigger the detention requirement mm -hmm. under the new code so um, I, I know they're taking the drainage into account but um, they don't have to meet that on-site retention requirement okay um, and then the seven foot buffer that was mentioned or yeah. separation distance uh, yeah, the the seven foot buffer. I mean, you know, it it, it varies. It, it doesn't vary versus a, fr a fraternity versus an apartment building, but it 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 varies depending on the the use of the property. Uh, for example, it doesn't apply to single family homes or two family homes. Uh, it does apply to uh, buildings with three units or more, and it does apply in commercial areas and industrial areas. Uh, Okay. Um, but it, it varies depending on uh, use and, and what's next to the property. Okay. And is that met here or no? It's one of the nonconformities, the separation. The, the, the separation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nonconforming. Okay, but it's not being increased. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. you. Are there, oh, yes. Hello. Hello, my name is Eric Van Gorp. I'm actually here representing Phi Kappa Theta. I was letting John speak, but I want to answer some questions, so. Okay, do you swear to tell the truth? I do. And is your address? 20, uh, just put 2110 Lincoln Way. That's okay. who I'm here representing. So what you see in front of us is I started this process back in the spring. Um, our parking lot's probably 45, 50 years old, and it's shot. It's done. Um, I went to Manats, got a bid to replace it, walked into the city office to get a permit, and it triggered a ball of, ball of worms that I wasn't prepared to answer. Um, so reality is we could mill this down to one inch, overlay it, and I wouldn't need any permit from anyone. Um, we're choosing to try to do it the right way, fix it properly. Um, in regards to the drainage, we have become victim um, over the last 15 years. Everything on that block runs through our parking lot. Um, we didn't ask for that to happen. It is just kind of when Sunset Beach apartment was built to the south of us, they drained their entire parking lot into the Pike's backyard. Um, everything else runs down to the Pike's backyard. It therefore runs into our parking lot. Um, actually, the property to the west, sometime in the last 10 years, I don't know when, um, a six inch PVC pipe showed up on our property, draining water out of their back property onto our parking lot. Um, we tried fighting it five, six, seven years ago, got nowhere with it, so we've just kind of learned to deal with it and allow it. Um, with Fox Engineering, we are trying to, between Fox Engineering and Manats, we are trying to take the parking lot and work on the drainage and have everything flow to the middle, run to beach, you know, to try to handle the drainage the best we can. We're putting curb and gutter up along the 117 Beach <coughs> building to try to help create a buffer to force the water where we want it. Um, unfortunately, we can't meet all the requirements, as Ray said, simply because this property was built back in the 1920s. Um, and the reason why the properties, we're not doing anything funny with the two buildings. The reason why we're putting them on one plat is because that was a request that came from the city. They asked us to put, you know, they asked us if we would consolidate them onto one parcel instead of having a building over the property line. So. You know, there's nothing funny going on there. It's just us simply trying to comply with what the city has asked us to do. So, 
Any questions? No. Nope. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak on this request? If not, we will close the public hearing. Um, so now it's time for any additional questions for staff or the applicant from the board. Any? I don't have, I have one for sure. staff. And, um, on attachment D, it appears to me that these elevation lines are different than <coughs> attachment C or B. I'm assuming that these are after built or proposed uh, contours. Is your attachment D such that you can read the numbers? Is attachment D the uh, landscape plan? It's the landscape plan, okay. And they appear to be different. Uh, just shapes is all I can make out. I can't read the numbers on either attachment B or D, but they're different shapes, which indicates to me that these are as built proposed contours or elevations. And I'm curious as to which direction that pavement's sloping and those contours should be able to tell us. This is the landscape plan. I think we could, no, that's, we could ask the applicant yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sure John can help clarify He's that. Ready. Right there. <laughs> yeah, I did the design for this um, improvement. But yeah, it, currently we're not changing any drainage patterns and we're picking up the six inch pipe that Eric mentioned. Um, at its current elevation, but we are um, depressing the middle of the parking lot to kind of help get the water out to beach. Currently, it's kind of flat and leads to the, some flooding when there's heavy rains um, to the apartment building. So we're we're just depressing the middle a little bit to. Here's the grading plan. Yeah, yeah. Oh. There, there's the one that I have. Exactly. Okay. About. Oh, okay. Can you s s read what in the top? left hand corner I don't have a direction arrow the elevation can you read what that elevation is as opposed to the ones I'm assuming south of the apartments and yeah the dark line is elevation 910 and you can see there's a, a real light dash line that's also elevation 910 so it matches into the existing around the entire perimeter and then as I mentioned, just the middle drive aisle is is depressed slightly more than it than it is today. Okay, and then the main, the one that comes up between the two buildings, the dark one. What's the elevate? Is that the number? That's two? that dash line is a uh, indicates a swale through there, kind of a a low spot where the water would would flow, and it's you know right right in between the two buildings. So. Um, we're matching existing around the entire perimeter of the new paving, and we're just slightly depressing the, the middle there so it continues to flow the same direction. It just does it a little more efficiently than it, than it did in the past. Okay, so your opinion, the water, I wish you were over by that thing so you could do you know, oh, yeah. but the water landing in the big main part of the, which directions will it flow? <coughs> It will flow. It will flow to the middle, and then it'll flow uh, down. It'll flow this way and out on the beach. Okay, so it's going to exit the property through the two driveways. Any water coming in yes. or landing on it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Water landing here will flow that way to the dash line, and then out and down. Same thing it does today. Okay. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Oh, I guess I should ask if there's other questions for the applicant. Sorry. No. None? No. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, all right. If there's no more questions, I can entertain a motion. <clears throat> I move to approve the request for an exception to section 29406 9C of the zoning ordinance to allow a drive aisle width 
that is less than the minimum required width and a parking space length for 11 parking spaces that is less than the minimum required length as requested by the applicant for the properties located at 2110 Lincoln Way and 117 Beach Avenue. Okay, second? Sure. <laughs> so that's a motion by Perkins, a second by Shapa. Um, just <laughs> um, before we do a roll call vote, I just wanted to um, see if there's discussion and just state that I understand there are nonconformities with this property and they're not being increased. Correct. Um, the quality of the parking lot is being improved. Um, the drainage seems like it will be the same. Um, and again, just clarify that the the zoning of the it, it seems like the fraternity house versus apartment question is based on the use of those structures is that correct it, 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 we're not creating a parcel that's split zone no okay. uh, the, the way the parcel is now is you see this line uh, here mm -hmm. that's a property line now yep so the building was on top of the property line okay so this way it puts it all on one lot and great and One's an apartment building, one's a fraternity, which, which meets the zoning. Okay, thank you. Is there any other discussion? Nope. No. Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Shameful. Yes. Aye. Shameful. Aye. And so the motion is declared approved. Any person desiring to appeal this decision to a court of record may do so within 30 days of the filing of this decision. Um, I move to adjourn. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. And the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>